This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Hi, I'm Adam, and welcome to First Man Photography. Now, this video is not in any way starting like I thought or I hoped it was going to. And I'm still here feeling almost emotionally upset about what I've just discovered, um, because as we explore around these landscapes, you can't help but fall in love with them and the things that we see, the, just the beauty of nature. And I've come to photograph this tree here, which I have photographed before, as you can see here, but it's partly dead, or it's got a lot of dying branches, and I don't really understand why. Now, for quite a while, the heather around this tree has seem to be reducing for whatever reason. Now, I don't know why that is, whether it's the landowner is has some reason to be doing it. As I turned up here, there's all these brown branches which are clearly just dead. It's such a beautiful evening as well. And as you walk up to them, you can actually see that somehow they've been snapped off. Whether it's intentional or it was some kind of machinery or just outright vandalism. I don't really know. But it's, su it's such a beautiful tree. It's so beautiful and so unique and so isolated. And I just don't understand it. There may be a good reason. I don't know if, if any of you know, please do let me know. But part of my mind is for whatever reason going towards the vandalism route. I don't want to believe that, but I found a tiny bit, a uh, tiny bit of evidence, which has kind of upset me. Right, I'm just going to interrupt the video there, just for a second, before I show you my theory of why it could be vandalism. But it's the next day now, and I've had a chance to calm down a little bit from when I found that tree yesterday. And I've showed one of the images to my best mate Lyle, who's been on this channel a few times, and he suggested that it may well be lightning damage, so the tree's been struck by lightning, and that does fit because the way the branches were broken and damaged and very gnarled was quite strange, which is partly the reason I couldn't figure it out at the time, but I think lightning is a good shout. I really hope that's it and not vandalism. But let's get back to the video and I'll show you what I found. Let me just come around here and just find it again. I'm gonna pick it up, I will take it home with me, but I've just left it in position to show you. Right down here, so there's the tree, just there. Just down here, you can see that. A smoke bomb. Clearly, someone thought it was a good idea to launch that, to maybe put a bit of mist behind the tree or whatever with the smoke. Ah, oh, and I find that extremely frustrating. I understand the temptation to want to use smoke grenades to get good photographs, but that's not the way. It just can't be, can it? Surely. They do it on films and stuff, fair enough. But for an individual to take an individual photograph, is the justification for that? Personally, I've decided not. It's funny as well because I've just been talking this week with a few fellow photographers, and particularly here in the North York Moors, about the balance between the conservation of land and then trying to attract visitors to the area. And it's something I want to find out more about because I'm not all that well educated on it in all honesty. I want to get a better understanding of it, get an idea of how I can minimise my impact and be sustainable in my activities. Oh man. Right, I'm going to pick this, pick this up because apart from anything, not only is it Disgusting. It's just litter as well, isn't it? With that all said, although it's not looking as beautiful as maybe it has done in the past, and hopefully it will again because it's still alive, clearly, I'm still going to photograph it because I think it deserves it. But I promise we will talk about drone photography in a minute, but 
I want to photograph this tree in the light now because I've been here a little while now and the more I look at it, even in its damaged state, the more it's grown on me. A bit like you fall in love with a scruffy lost puppy or something like that. It's looking particularly good because with some of that beautiful golden hour light on it and the slightly of a very much darker cloud that way, it's actually looking fantastic. So I'm just gonna snap a shot quickly. I am, I've got the camera down quite low. So I've got the heather in the foreground. Obviously it would be better if it was flowering, but that's not really the point of this. Uh, and in fact, I like the colors, the green, <laughs> Like I say, the brown is attracting me now in that tree to sh just to show it off in that damaged state, in its vulnerable state. I really, really like it. I'm zoomed in to about 35 millimeters to cut my shadow out and the shadow of the camera as well that the sun is casting because we are completely front lit here. So I'm at f11, 125th of a second, ISO 100. It's so beautifully still. It's usually so windy up here, but there's no wind whatsoever, which is working perfectly for me with that tree, with that 125th of a second shutter speed. So focus on the branches. Two second timer on that camera. And <laughs> yeah, it's not dead, is it? Despite whichever idiot set that smoke bomb off, smoke grenade off in this area that's so vulnerable to fire, particularly in the summer. Despite all that, that tree is still standing. It's still alive. And despite the damaged branches, I still think it's beautiful. So I'm pumped to be shooting it and the sun's even nicer now. Let's go again, two second timer again. There we go, let's take a look. <laughs> but somehow, somehow there's just beauty in it. Gah, love this tree, now I've fallen in love with it. I must have loved it before, I've realized, but yeah. So one of the things I've always loved about photography is the amalgamation or the marriage between art and technology. And what I love about technology generally is how these new things that come along can open up new creative opportunities. Now, to paint light using the drone gives us yet another bunch of opportunities. I talked a little while ago about having a new project and this is what I was talking about. Now, I wasn't gonna share it on the channel because, uh, for, I don't know, for fear of people copying me or using the technique so it becomes really, really popular. I don't know. But in the end, I just thought, well, I don't want any technique to be what gives me a leg up. I want it to be because my pictures are good and my artistic vision is right. And aside from that, I don't think I've got the time to put a full project together without making videos about it because I don't have time to do both things. Essentially, all it is, is using these. They are called loom cubes and I came across them about a year ago now. So you basically attach them to the drone and then you can uh, paint things from above. It just creates this ethereal, almost moonlit type feel, and it just has a completely different mood lighting it from above as it does from if you were light painting it at ground level. Yeah, I've got two of these. They sort of sit on this attachment onto the drone. So I'm gonna fly the drone up, get the shutter open on the camera, and then just paint the tree with light. It sounds straightforward, but I need to wait for it to get dark. So before we do all that and before it gets dark, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you are a photographer and you need a website, there's no better place to build it than on Squarespace. You need very little technical knowledge to get going because you can just use one of their beautiful templates, drag and drop a few things around, put your images on there, a bit of your text, and then you're gonna have a beautiful, really slick looking, unique website, and it's gonna be great. You can then, if you want to, upgrade it to an e-commerce website to start selling some prints or any other uh, services or products you might offer. And they've got brilliant customer support if you run into trouble, which you probably won't. But yeah, I suggest you give them a try if you are in the market for a website or you just wanna show your images to the world, it's a great place to do that and it will grow with you. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase.
Right, here we go then. I've already got the camera pre-focused on the tree from when it was still light. I can also use those lights underneath the tree to help me with that. It's very straightforward really in terms of the settings. So I am at f11 because I want everything to be sharp still and hopefully I can extend the shutter time to make sure I get the right exposure with that. I'm just keeping it at ISO 100 to keep the noise down and then 15 seconds to start with. Then I'm just gonna fly the drone up, get it set so it's gonna circle around the tree out of the frame, then fire away. Hopefully then the light will be right on the tree. It'll look really nice. And it's just gonna give you that kind of ethereal moonlit feel to the image. Right, I'm just gonna turn off the lights under the tree because we don't want them in there. Right, and turn the drone on, now that the drone lights are on. Take off. And then take off. Now, with the drone, I'm going to start recording. Uses batteries much quicker because the lights are actually quite heavy. So, I don't have too long here. Let's fly it across. Now, lighten that tree up really nicely. Right, then we go to point of interest. Then you have to move it back a bit. It seems to be six meters is the minimum. So let's go for that. And then it just starts going round. So I want to speed it up to go to about 18 seconds. Let's bring it down a bit. So it lights the tree up. Hmm. It's really, really tricky. I'm having to do it manually, but it I get too low, I'm seeing a lot of the light in the camera. So let's just try again. <laughs> ah, now there we go. That was so difficult. It was really, really difficult. Trying to get the drones fly right, trying to light the tree smoothly, trying to get the shot, trying to talk to the camera at the same time. Don't think it went too well because I was looking at the camera and it was just looking so blurry and weird. And I thought it was because I was getting lens flare from the lights because I was like exposing for about 30 seconds in the end. I've landed the drone because I've run out of battery now and I went to just take one last image and realized because it's so, it's been so warm, now it's got cold. Everything's got so damp, including the front of the lens, uh, which is covered in a kind of layer of water, essentially. So yeah, that, I think that's completely mucked the shot up. However, maybe it's going to give it that even more ethereal feel. I won't know until I get it back into post-processing. Whoa, a lot of practice to go and yeah, not a lot of practice to do. A lot of practice. My book is going to be starting to ship next week. I'm very excited about it. It's my story about the, some of the things I did in the police, some of those shocking moments, sad moments, funny moments, and how I then transitioned to be a full-time photographer. So, um, yeah, if you've pre-ordered, thank you. You'll be getting your copy very, very soon, and I look forward to telling you more about it in the coming weeks. But pretty dark now, still getting eaten, but that's the end. <laughs> See ya. <you. laughs>